Okay, so to make our wagons even grimier, we're going to use a technique that, oddly enough, doesn't seem to be hugely popular, but I find it really easy to use. Um, it's pretty cheap and uh, it's ideal for beginners. We are going to use watercolours. Now, these watercolour paints all came from a standard box from Wilco. Uh, costs three or four quid. You can get similar ones from Flying Tiger or The Works, anywhere that sells cheapo art supplies. These colours are white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber and black. These provide me with more or less everything I need. Um, so I think they represent excellent value. I mean, I've, I've been using these for two or three years now, and as you can see, they're nowhere near exhausted. So let's get to it. I have a special palette that I use for my watercolor mixing, which I never clean, because the great thing about watercolors is that once they're dry, you can reuse them, just add water. So what I will do is mix up my kind of standard kind of wagon dirt mix, which is a little bit of black and a little bit of burnt umber. Slightly less burnt umber than black there. And then I will take a sort of fairly thick brush there. Um, incidentally, you may have noticed that when I applied the wagon markings, I used a very fine brush. Um, you can get those from any model supplier. Um, this is actually just a fairly standard cheapo paintbrush. Um, you, know, you don't want anything too expensive for this kind of thing. Um, you can add as much water as you need for this. And I don't know if you can hear that, but I don't know what the neighbours are doing upstairs. Um, that's, that's the fun of living in a flat, I guess. Right. And there we go. We've got a colour that's sort of slightly lighter than black. Um you know, ideal for, actually I might, I might just add a little bit of, uh, a little, just a tad of yellow ochre there. Okay, let's play with that a little. Yeah, that's definitely getting there, right. The other colour I'm going to need is more of a sort of rusty brown. Is there a musician called Rusty Brown? I feel I feel like there ought to be if there isn't. Um, and the main colour I use for rust, he said picking up the wrong tube of paint, is um, burnt umber. Now burnt sienna is kind of a much lighter colour. I prefer um, burnt umber for kind of older, kind of grubbier rust as it were. Um, and I don't know if you have noticed, but I'm kind of also, there we go, letting the uh, letting the older drier paint mix in so really I'm, I'm really not looking for pure colors here there we go and you can thin it down as much as you like by just adding more water there we go lovely isn't quite the word and here's how you use it so I'm just going to kind of just dollop this on. Now, as you can see, it's 
it's come out quite thick, but that's okay because all you have to do is add more water. It goes without saying that you need to be a little bit careful where you do this because it's kind of a messy process. Um, I'm just sort of blobbing it all over the place there. Just just it sort of um, naturally kind of runs into the various nooks and crannies and crevices of the wagon there, uh, which is what it would do in real life. So I'm just going to leave that one to dry. Then just going to, whoops. Now, this one, I'm going to go for, I'm going to use a thinner brush, which you may recognize from earlier. I'm going to kind of go for a sort of, a kind of, kind of a more streaky effect. The idea being that rain has kind of caused rust to run down the sides of the wagon. You've probably seen this this effect yourself. You know, it's gone over the data panel, which is which is why this, it's it's one of the reasons I said you shouldn't worry too much about getting the edges absolutely perfect there. And we'll get some on the doors. There we go. And we'll uh, we'll come back to that one in a bit and see how it looks. So here we are on the other side of the wagon. I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of other useful tools, which are a tissue which is quite good for creating a sort of slightly mottled effect. And this, which is a cotton bud, or Q-tip, if you are one of our transatlantic cousins, which, as you can see, is great for that kind of streaky effect. There we go, let's just get it in there. Marvellous. All right then, it's now been several hours and the watercolour has dried. Um, now the great thing about watercolour is that if you're not happy with the end result, all you have to do is wet it, wash it off, and it'll be like nothing ever happens, no one need ever know. I, however, am quite pleased with the end result of this. Um, these now look like a couple of grotty workaday wagons, haven't seen a cleaner in their lives. But I'm not quite finished yet. Join me again next week when I'll show you some more techniques that'll really help you to bring your wagons to life. Not literally though, this isn't a Pixar movie. <laughs>